We've seen a broad range of evidence, some of it highly speculative. But there are enough well-documented cases to call for a closer look at the conventional explanation of man's origins, the theory of evolution. England is the birthplace of evolution's first champion, Charles Darwin. Darwin's theory of evolution proposes that simple life forms or species evolved into more complex species by accidental changes over long periods of time. For example, given five million years, an ape can evolve into a man. Since Darwin's time, his theory has become central to our understanding of how man came into existence. It's almost universally accepted today. But according to science investigator Richard Milton, Darwin's theory of how man evolved from the apes has some critical problems. The building behind me is London's Natural History Museum. It looks rather like a cathedral or a church, and in a way that's what it is. It's a kind of temple to Darwin's theory of evolution. People come to museums like the Natural History Museum to get answers to their question. Have we evolved from apes? Do humans and apes share a common ancestor? And to look at an exhibit like this, you'd think that question had been answered decisively yes. But the answer is far from decisive. In fact, this representation is an interpretation of the fossils, the interpretation of one group of scientists. There are other interpretations, but you won't find them in this museum or any other museum in the world. In the model of the evolutionary tree, man and apes are said to share a common ancestor. However, evidence of that common ancestor is highly contested. That's why it is still called the missing link. When Darwin's theory of evolution was embraced, it was assumed that in the next century enough fossil evidence would be found to prove that man had evolved from the apes. Darwinists have promised us a missing link, and so they've got to deliver. They've got to come up with one. Uh, any missing link will do, it seems. Uh, every so often a skeleton is found in Africa, its uh, discoverers describe it as being the missing link, the headlines come and go, and then later on, that skeleton, th those bones are reclassified either as human or as ape. And so far, the missing link is still missing. One of the most classic examples of this is the story of Java Man, discovered by Eugene Dubois in 1892. Dubois discovered a very primitive looking ape-like skull cap and he discovered this thigh bone about 40 feet away. He said, well, obviously they must belong to the same creature. And that creature walked erect like a, a human being and had an ape-like skull, so that must be a missing link, the Pithecanthropus ape man. So maybe you had a big ape and a, a human being living together in Java about a million years ago. The important point to make about the Java man discovery is that it's based on a speculative leap in which two pieces of evidence are put together in a way that's not really warranted. At the end of his life, Dubois realized that the skull cap belonged to a large ape and the leg bone was from a man. Nevertheless, Java Man was prominently displayed at the Museum of Natural History in New York until 1984. Since then, it has been removed. Today, museums all over the world display models of yet another skeleton they call the missing link, the common ancestor of both man and ape. Lucy, you know, the famous Australopithecine, uh, discovered by Donald Johansson. He says she was very human-like, but I was at a conference of anthropologists where many of them were making a case that she was hardly distinguishable from an ape or a monkey. These bones have been restored to resemble a missing link, part human, part ape. And Lucy is now thought of as being our long lost ancestor. But this is merely an interpretation, the interpretation of one group. Those same bones can be, and they have been taken by scientists, and identified as simply an extinct ape. Nothing to do with us at all. Newspapers are constantly reporting new discoveries that add to our understanding of man's origins, but so far, conclusive evidence of a missing link has not been found. So what happens to the evolutionary model if the missing link does not exist at all? Without it, there's little support for man's connection with the apes, and the model simply collapses. Some people have said to me, how can you criticize a theory if you, can't, if you don't have something to replace it with? 
well, I don't accept that. If the emperor hasn't got any clothes on, then the emperor hasn't got any clothes on. It's not my fault. It seems to me that if Darwinism is wrong, then somebody has got to point the finger.